In this episode of our afternoon tea series, we have two delicious pastries lined up, a gorgeous strawberry and cream shortbread and a chocolate orange eclair. So first up we have our delicious strawberry shortbread and the first step is to make our shortbread dough. This is a very, very easy dough to make. So we have some room temperature butter here. Unsalted ideally, if you don't have unsalted, that's completely fine. Next in we have some caster sugar and a small dash of vanilla extract just for flavor. So if you don't have a mixer, you can do this with a wooden spoon. It just takes a little bit longer. So start it off nice and slow to begin with and you mix that for about four or five minutes until it's nice and soft and creamy. At this point, when the sugar and butter is nice and soft, we are going to add in our flour. So we have our flour here. Again, slowly. When your dough reaches a breadcrumb consistency, it's better to finish this by hand. Um, don't be afraid if it looks crumbly. Don't be tempted to add more butter or it, it will come together once you work it on the table. So just press it together. And again, the less working you do with this pastry, the better. So as you can see, it is forming a dough. When you get it to this stage, we're going to add a little bit of flour to the table and we're gonna roll this out. Again, this is a crumbly mixture, so don't be alarmed if it does start to break a little bit. You can just pat it back together and keep turning your dough so it stops it from sticking on the table. This is a really beautiful crumbly biscuit, um, ideal for a strawberry shortbread, but it's also delicious just with a tea or a coffee. So you can make this dough, you can get it to this point and you can freeze it if you like, and then you can take it out when you wish to use it. But again, it is beautiful for afternoon tea, but it's also equally as delicious on its own. So once we have it rolled, we take our little cutter. Because these are for afternoon tea, we are going with a, a smaller biscuit, but you can cut them larger if you wish. This is a plain vanilla shortbread. And what I love about this recipe is that you can change it yourself. You can add in some lemon zest, you can add in some orange zest, some almond essence. You can play around with this dough. As long as you don't change the liquid quantities, you can add whatever flavor you want really. And it's, it's a really versatile dough. These biscuits don't spread too much in the oven, so you don't have to be too careful about spacing them out. They will spread, but not so much. With this recipe, you will get about 30 biscuits if you're using a five centimeter cutter. If we're gonna stack these up for afternoon tea like a little sandwich, that will be 15 portions. Again, the trimmings of the dough, you can put back together and re-roll. That's why it's important at the early stages that you don't over mix it or mix it too much because you'll have to mix it again at a later point. If you want them to hold their shape a little bit better, I would recommend popping them into the fridge for about five minutes and they'll hold their shape a little bit better when baking. But at this point, you can put them in. So this is going to go into the oven at 160 fan for about 10 to 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on it. When it starts to go golden brown, they're perfectly ready. Next up to sandwich these delicious shortbread cookies together, we're going to make a beautiful Chantilly cream. So for a Chantilly cream, you can have an ordinary whipped cream, it's completely fine, but this is a nice version where we're gonna whisk some double cream. You can use single cream. I find with double cream, it, um, it's quite thicker and it holds better as well for the dessert. And um, we're going to add in some icing sugar. This is gonna give a little bit of sweetness. So you're going with about a tablespoon and then we are gonna put in a dash of vanilla. So again, this elevates a very simple whipped cream to a delicious Chantilly cream, which will complement the strawberries and the shortbread biscuit. Ensure that your cream is nice and thick because we're going to be piping this on top of the shortbreads and this is what's gonna hold the strawberries in place. So you can do this in advance, whisk your cream and pop it into the fridge 
and that'll keep fine in there until you're ready to use it. Our biscuits are cooked. They have a delicious golden brown color on the outside. So we're gonna let those rest for five, 10 minutes until they're completely cold and then we'll assemble them. While they're cooling down, I'm gonna start on my strawberries. This really is a match made in heaven. Strawberries and shortbread are the perfect pairing, especially when strawberries are in season. But again, depending on where you are, or what time of year it is, use the fruit that you enjoy eating and especially if it is in season. So may that be raspberries, may that be blackberries. These work really well together with the shortbread. My personal favorite is the strawberries. <laughs> Now, all of the hard work is done. This is the easy part, the assembly. So what we're going to do is we have our cream already whipped. We're going to put this into a piping bag. If you don't have a piping bag, that's completely fine. You can just put this on with a spoon. It is a little bit neater. So for afternoon tea, generally all the little pastries are quite neat. So that's why I'm using a bag today. So we're going to fill it half full with cream. And this bag, as you can see, is fitted with a round nozzle again. Ideally, if you have a nozzle, if you don't, that's completely fine. You can do without. So what we're going to do is we're going to pipe some cream onto the center of our biscuit. We have our delicious strawberries that we have prepared from earlier and we're going to assemble those on our biscuits. To stick our next biscuit on top, we're just gonna put on another tiny bit of cream and then we put our next shortbread little biscuit sitting on top. So once we have that layer on, we're gonna put a tiny little blob of cream on top just to finish them off. We're gonna put one more little strawberry here and we're gonna give a small dusting with icing sugar just to finish off the look. And I never leave the house without them. Some edible flowers. If you can get your hands on them, they finish off every dessert. We've got a mixture here of little edible flowers. And again, this just takes your, your afternoon tea pastries to the next level. So there's three of them finished. I'll get cracking on the rest. That's our strawberry shortbreads finished. Next up, we have a delicious chocolate orange eclair. We're gonna prepare our candied orange peel, and this is gonna be going on top of our beautiful eclairs. So we have a large orange here, and we're just gonna take a peeler, and we're going to peel the orange. This is really good because this pith can be quite bitter, so if you have a peeler, it just cuts a thinner layer of the skin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a delicious syrup, and we're gonna boil this and cover it with sugar so we're gonna have a nice crispy candied orange peel. So when you have your peel ready, it's up to you what size you wanna cut it. I like to have nice chunky pieces. Again, because we are going with afternoon tea today, we want the pieces to be a little bit smaller so they sit on top. This works really well for lemon and for lime as well. I do find though with the orange, it keeps its color a little bit better. So visually, I prefer it that way. Now, that's our orange peel prepped and ready to go. So I'm gonna take this over to the stove and we're gonna poach this in a lovely sugar syrup. For poaching our orange peel here, we have uh, equal measures of sugar and water. We bring that to the boil and just simply add this into the syrup. And we're gonna cook that until the peel is not bitter and it has softened up slightly. So that will take in around five minutes or so when we keep that on a gentle boil. So while this is boiling away here, I'm gonna move on to our shoe pastry. Now, shoe pastry is the beginning of some of the most delicious pastries out there. Eclairs, shoe buns, profiteroles. People are naturally scared, I find, of making shoe pastry, but it actually is really easy to make. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips and pointers today to help you out. So we have some water. We're going to add this into our pot. Now we'll turn this on. Next in, we're adding our butter. So tip number one, do this on a gentle heat. If you bring your water to a rapid boil, the water will evaporate and reduce and this will change the consistency of your dough. So you wanna heat your water and your butter gently. Now that our butter and our water are combined and the butter is melted, I can turn up the heat and we're gonna bring this to a boil. If you've used salted butter, you don't need to add salt, but if it's unsalted, I always add a little pinch of salt. This will help with the flavor and the browning. Next, we're going to add in our flour. And this is what we're gonna be making a roux here. At this point, 
Keep stirring until all of your flour is combined and you're left with a thick paste. You wanna keep cooking this for about a minute or so until there is no trace of any flour left. A nonstick pan is advisable here, otherwise you'll be cleaning up for a while afterwards. If you find that it's getting a little bit hot, you're in control of the temperature, so just turn it down a little bit. You don't want your pastry to burn. Once there's no trace of any flour left in your shoe pastry, put this into your bowl, and we're gonna to continue to mix this until it cools down, because we're gonna add eggs to the next step of this. If your pastry is really, really hot, it can scramble, so you're better off just stirring it for three, four minutes until your pastry here cools down slightly before we add the eggs in. Again, doing it by hand is the old school way. If you have a mixer, you can do it in the mixer and leave it for two, three minutes, mixing slowly with the paddle attachment. Once we have the shoe pastry at this point here, we're going to add in one whole egg. The reason why we add the two eggs separately because there's a number of things that can change the recipe. If you've reduced your water too much, if there's a little bit extra flour in there, the consistency of the shoe pastry can change somewhat. So I always suggest is if the recipe calls for four, have three, but keep one back because the end goal that we're looking for is piping consistency that holds its shape when you put it on the tray. Do not give up hope. This will come together. There are moments where you question if it will, it just takes a moment where you mix it together. So once it's at this point here where it's nice and thick, we're gonna start adding the second egg. Now chances are we could need all of this egg, but it's always easier to add more than to try to take some out. So we're just gonna add in about half of that. And again, we just mix this around. So you can see here, this is still quite thick. I think we're gonna need the remainder of this egg, but again, it's always better to ensure that you don't add too much. So you can see here, we have a lovely smooth dough with a nice shine to it. And this is what we're looking for here. This is the consistency. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill our piping bag here. Never overfill your piping bag. I always fill it half and then top it up afterwards. I sometimes find if you overfill your bag, it, it's harder to control and sometimes the pastry can come out the top. So again, we go with half of a bag here. And once that's filled, we're going to squeeze that down until it comes out the end here. And I'm gonna move this to one side. A little tip when piping shoe pastry, have it on a lined baking sheet. I always put a small bit of pastry on the four corners and one in the center. And this will hold your baking parchment down when it's baking. Because as your shoe pastry cooks, it's going to puff up and it's quite hollow and light. So if you have a fan oven, it can blow your pastry and the sheet. So if you stick it down with a little bit of pastry, it'll stop that from happening. So once your sheet is ready to go, now it's time to start piping. With this recipe, you'll get about 20 mini eclairs, 10 larger ones. So again, completely up to yourself, depending on the type of um, party that you're having. Because with afternoon tea, generally speaking, pastries are about two mouthfuls. What I love about shoe pastry is that they're a great vessel for flavors. So you can add in whipped cream to this, you can add in white chocolate for the top, milk, dark. Um, today we're going with a gorgeous bitter dark chocolate with candied orange, but you can put white chocolate and cherry. So it's a, it's a beautiful vessel, the pastry for carrying beautiful flavors. So again, tailor that to your own tastes. And um, today we're just giving you a guideline of what you can do. So as you can see, as we're piping the pastry, it is holding its shape, it's not falling down on the tray. If that is the case, then there has been too much egg added in. So again, that is the consistency that you're looking for. So when you're piping, if you have enough mix, pipe them on two trays. That way then your, your mix won't spread and stick together. Allow a little bit of room for moving in the oven. The next tip is your oven needs to be hot. People have a general rule of thumb of, of baking around 160, turn your oven up. Have it set about 200 degrees. That heat is gonna cause that water that's in the dough to turn into steam, puff up the pastry and create a gorgeous hollow shell. What I would say is when your pastries go in, don't open the oven down because your shoe pastry can collapse. So when the they go into the oven initially, leave them in there for 10 minutes. And after about 10 minutes, it's safe to have a little peek. Be careful when you're opening the door because steam will come out with the amount of water that's in here. So preheated oven, 200 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
here we have our candied orange peel. So what we're going to do is just with our fork, we're going to take out the orange peel and we're just going to pop it onto a bit of kitchen roll here just to absorb any extra liquid that's in there. What's great about this is you can make these in advance. Anything that you poached in sugar syrup, you can pop into a little airtight container, leave that in your cupboard or your pantry, and that will keep easily for three, four months. So again, these little steps can be done in advance and they're always great. Any decorating cakes, it's lovely to have something like this to garnish the top of them. And this sugar, I also like to keep and I use that when I'm baking as well. So you've got a beautiful um, candied orange flavored sugar if you're making cupcakes or, or different cakes. We're just gonna pat these down just to remove any extra moisture that's there. And we're just going to toss them in a little bit of sugar. People make the mistake of leaving them in the sugar and the, the sugar clumps up and you're left with quite chunky. That's not what you want. So you just want to give them a little coating, lift them out and put them onto your plate and leave them. Ideally, if you can make these the day before, they obviously they dry out and they have a little bit more texture to them. But the longer that you have them, the nicer that they'll be. In saying that, you still can make them on the day and they're, they're still perfectly fine. But if you prefer your candied peel to have a little bit more of a crunch, the sugar will remove any extra moisture that's in there and it will have a little bit of a bite. So our shoe pastries out of the oven. While these are cooling, I'm just gonna whip some cream. So this is the fun part. This is where we get to decorate and fill it with delicious flavors. We're gonna Take our shoe pastry, and we're gonna carefully cut in half. I always line up my base with the top just to ensure that when we fill it, that the matching top is going back onto the base. I'm using a gorgeous 55% dark chocolate here. Important when you're melting the chocolate as well. Chocolate will burn if it's a rapid boil or if your bowl is touching the water. Take it gently, take it easy, heat your water, switch it off, and then rest your bowl on top and it will melt gradually for you. If you are gonna melt your chocolate in a microwave, give it small bursts, maybe 20 second bursts, even less. It will melt fine for you, but just it will burn if your temperature is too high or if it's left in too long. So once we have our shoe pastry cut here, we have our cream. I've left this plain today because we have a lot of flavors going on with our dark chocolate on top and our candied orange peel. So I don't think that it needs a pastry cream. I think a, a, a plain whipped cream is, is perfect for this. You don't want your dish to be overly sweet. Again, when we're talking about afternoon tea, remember there's also scones, sandwiches, there's a lot to, a lot to eat. So you don't want something to be too sweet. Don't be shy when it comes to the cream because you want people to see the cream filling inside. So be generous. Loads of cream. The next part is to decorate the top. This can be a messy job, but just think of the rewards afterwards. We're going to dip it in dark chocolate. And we're going to rest this on top. And again, you just repeat the process, dipping in dark chocolate. If your chocolate becomes a little bit too firm, then don't be afraid to pop it back onto the heat just for the water to, to help it melt again. As in, you're always in control of all of these pastries. So again, if something isn't working out, there's always a solution. You can see a beautiful shine to this chocolate. Again, that's because it was melted gently. It was a nice soft residual heat. And the last one here at the end. It's the biggest one, that one's for me. Time to have a little bit of fun. It is afternoon tea after all, and what I have here is a delicious edible gold spray. But this is going a bit extra. You don't have to do this, but if you can get your hands on this, it is really, really nice. So we're gonna spray the top of our eclairs with our edible gold. And next, what we're gonna do is just finish off with our candied orange. Because again, chocolate and orange, you can't go wrong. If there's one thing that I'm certain of, that will definitely impress any of your afternoon tea guests. So there we have it. There is two very simple afternoon tea pastries, the strawberry shortbread and the chocolate orange eclair. Both of these I love because they're relatively simple to make and they freeze really well. So your pastry can be done in advance and frozen, taken out, rolled and baked. And your shoe pastry shells, they can also be made in advance and frozen and decorated at the last moment. So it just takes the, the stress out of preparation for afternoon tea. And I hope you enjoy.